Hey, evening guys. Uh, I was going to go over a little project I'm starting and it may or may not be successful. This is the clamping screw in my uh, bandsaw, on my table bandsaw. And it's got a very unusual thread. And I've highlighted here in white and I want to try to focus down so you can get a good look at the thread profile on that. And I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it. And then I'm going to go to the shaft. Here, I'll actually put a piece of yellow paper behind it. I want you to try to see that thread profile there. It is a sawtooth, uh, also known as a buttress. I looked it up in the machinery's handbook. Uh, in the entire book, there's one page on uh, buttress threads with load uh, resisting side inclined and there's two uh, sizes one's a 45 45 one's a 50 50 and then they then they've got another one down here that's 33 by 33 uh, anyways there, there's well actually there I guess there's three of them huh and this one here has kind of a rounded bottom but then the nut has a square uh, shoulder um, I'm gonna do my best I'm gonna get a, a loop on and try to get in there and uh, read those uh, uh, threads in an unworn area but this was the whole thing on uh, buttress threads with load resisting side inclined uh, threads of buttress form sawtooth thread and then when we flip the page we don't, I don't have any charts or anything um, we goes to a German metric thread and German metric thread is the next category so there's really not a whole lot in the book about it uh, there's certainly no uh, standard thread sizes or thread pitches or anything like that. So I'm going to have to measure my thread pitch and uh, kind of start over with this thing. And uh, I'll have to grind my own tool after I figure out what angle it is. Uh, but I'm going to go get a loop, jeweler's loop on and get in with that thread. And um, I'm going to make myself a very small template out of sheet metal that goes in and fits the form of that thread very carefully so I can measure that form and uh, then we'll go from there. You know, I, I got to try to identify the base of the of the screw and see whether it's got a rounded bottom like this or a square bottom, or I have to be able to. I have to see the five degree subtlety uh, between the forty five and the fifty to see if, wh which one I actually have. So uh, this might be interesting. This might be a huge fail. But anyways, let's uh, let's get to identifying that thread. And. Uh, I mean, the reason we're replacing this is right in the sweet spot, right where this, uh, where the vise, uh, where this little half nut uh, slider, that's like a speed vise on your, uh, on your bandsaw, uh, right in the sweet spot, anywhere where you clamp in between two inch and four inch material, the screw is just worn. Yeah, you might be able to see it, but it, it doesn't tighten down good. And every time you go to tighten it, it strips and pops out and you got parts popping out when you're trying to make a cut and it's just not a reliable vice and it's all due to this this little lead screw and I don't know whether that half nut is the culprit it sure fits nice uh, down on a fresh part of it here but down where these these threads are all chewed up uh, it just it just keeps popping out so we're gonna make we're gonna make an attempt to make a new lead screw okay, so we've identified our thread and courtesy of Bausch and Lomb uh, I've got my two little templates that I made and they're only five degrees apart and uh, technically, I live about here, and if I were to take the 15 north and go over to here, I think Vegas is right about there. So uh, forget this uh, lead screw, I'm going to Vegas. Uh, all kidding aside, um, I, with the courtesy of Bausch and Lomb, and uh, with uh, my little templates I made, I was able to identify the thread. It is... Uh, the 45 uh, degree version. So there's only a five degree variation between the two threads and it's very subtle and very hard to see when you get down in that thread. But uh, uh, with advanced optics, we were able to get down there and identify it. So uh, I'm gonna cut a 45 degree tool and get, uh, uh, get a lead screw blanked out and hopefully get it cut. Now, I do not have a follow rest. I've got a steady rest, but I do not have a follow rest. And I don't know how this thing's going to cut. 
and that little spindly piece out here I think this is going to be probably going to be chuck side because uh, I can't see that supporting a hell of a lot and doing, doing my cutting pressure especially out here in the center I can see a lot of deflection there so uh, I don't have a follow rest so I'm going to try to do this without a follow rest and see how it goes and uh, see, if my, see if I get a lot of deflection across that part and see what happens all right but uh... okay so we're up to the point where we need to uh, do a thread count and I got my uh, caliper set for one inch and I'm set right at the peak of one and I end at the peak of another so this one counts as a half and this one counts as a half so we ignore those for now and we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven and a half twelve so we are twelve threads per inch and again we are cutting at the 45 so I'm gonna go grind a tool and uh, get ready to cut uh, 12 threads per inch and we're just coming up on our final uh, coming up on size finally and it was kind of like I expected I uh, uh, the center measures a little larger than the end so I got this end and this end within about a thou but I'm measuring about two thousandths big out here in the middle so the shaft is deflecting that much and that was kind of to be expected since I don't have a, uh, a follow rest. I do have a center or a steady rest or center rest but I don't have a uh, um, I don't have a follow rest so uh, threading may be a challenge uh, but uh, turning the shaft and roughing it down and getting it to size has, has not been too big of an issue. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, bring it back after we start threading. Okay, so there's a top-down view of my tool. And uh, it's, it's cut at a 45. It's relieved on this back face back here. It's pulled back about 8 degrees. And I actually gave it a little relief on this backside too, just for giggles, uh, just a couple degrees. And the compound... Um, <clears throat> It's set to 60, but I got the I got the Gibbs tightened down. It's we're gonna just come plunge straight in. Now I'm not gonna try to move it at a 45 or move it this way, which is actually backwards from the way you're thinking. So uh, we're just gonna fire it up and make a scratch cut, and then check our uh, uh, 12 teeth per inch and see how we do. Let's uh, let's fire this up and try it. Okay, we're just touching there. I'm going to make about a 5,000 scratch.
Okay, so we're back and the shaft's done. And there I was on the machine, machining away, talking to a camera with dead batteries like I had good sense and uh, failed to get uh, the turning down of this side, this side, yada yada. And uh, you see why I stopped short on my threads. Uh, that is of no consequence. Uh, the, the actual carrier stops right in this zone over here. So uh, stopping short on the threads. Uh, I knew I was doing it. And as soon as I saw what was happening, uh, I went and checked. And I, uh, it, it doesn't uh, have any consequence at all. So yes, the threads are stopped short. The, the threads kind of wedge themselves in there like a, uh, like a door stop. Anyways, I uh, just thought I'd show you my grind, so you could, I'll, I'll go straight down on that grind right there on the tool. And then I'll show you straight down on it this way. And that was the, uh, that was the tool to cut the buttress thread. So this is at a close. Um, what, it, I, I sped it up through, I don't know actually how much of the video I got, I haven't edited it yet. But uh, what I was doing is I'd make two passes uh, at two and a half thousandths each, and then I'd come back and make a spring pass. And it, it wouldn't touch on the ends, it would, it would just shave a little bit out of the center, and then it would uh, clearance again at, at the end. And uh, so two cutting passes, a spring pass. Two cutting passes, a spring pass. Just to keep it straight, because I was always removing material out of the center, because I, like I said, I don't have a follow rest. And uh, I, I know the material was uh, bowing away from me while I was working, so those spring passes kept uh, the center uh, in line. And uh, not a lot of variation, uh, so long shaft work. It's tricky without a follow rest. And if it was something super precise other than like a bandsaw, if we were cutting like an Acme thread for a machine or, you know, something that really, really mattered, uh, yeah, we'd need a follow rest and then we'd probably have to lap the uh, nut and the screw together as a pair. But uh, like I say, just a bandsaw, and that's how we cut, it, uh, cut our uh, buttress, buttress thread. Uh, let's go get this fitted. But I want everyone to take a real close look, and I just caught this, I want everyone to take a real close look at the way those threads start in. I just cut a right hand thread, the existing screw is left hand. So when I mirror imaged this thing and dropped it in there, everything looked really good. When I inferended them and brought the, uh, brought the teeth into contact with each other, everything looked really good. But there you can see the lead in on that one. And you can see the lead in on that one. So private pile, you will repeat the exercise. And uh, get it cut right this time. I don't think I'm going to film the second one. You guys already see what it's about. But uh, learn from my mistakes. Don't spend a bunch of time cutting a thread and getting it all perfect. Just to find out you cut it. I got the pitch right, the diameter right. Everything was good. Uh, just cut it in the wrong direction. 